All right, like I just mentioned, uh, this is going to be the last chapter. I think there's two more sections on this chapter, 8.6 and 8.7. But we're going to stop right here on this chapter. And remember what's on Thursday? Test on Thursday. Okay. Kiki, did you get a uh, lesson plan? No. All right, so let's take a look at this. Uh, let's review very quickly here because uh, what we're going to do today has a lot to do with the stuff that we've been doing so far, or at least lately. Let's put a little dot where the center of the circle is. And let's see, let's just copy that. So I don't have to put that dot every single time. We talked about this yesterday because we started going over that quiz yesterday. Yeah, that's a radius, that's true, but I'm looking at this thing right here. What do we call that angle right there? Central angle, okay, it's the central angle. Why is it the central angle? Because the vertex is where? At the center of the circle, very good. Okay, what do we know about this angle right here and this arc from here to here? Okay, they're the same. So if this was, I don't know, what does that look like? Like 25? Looks a lot bigger than 25. Let's say about 75. 90, 90 would be about right here. Let's say it's about 75 degrees. So if that, arc, or if that angle right there is 75 degrees, and I asked you to find arc AB, it would be 75 degrees. Pretty easy, right? Central angle is equal to the arc that it cuts off. Well, we add another one. Let's just do it in the same picture. Let's go from here to here. All right, and we'll just call this C and D. And we'll call this E. Doesn't look like they come together, but they do. They come together right there, right? So uh, this angle is kind of skinny, so let's give it a small number. What do you think? About 20 degrees? It's probably bigger than that, but that's okay. Let's say it's 20 degrees. So now, here we go. This is not a central angle. What do we call this angle? We said it yesterday. Inscribed angle, right? It's an inscribed angle where the vertex lies right on the circle. Everybody got that? It's not off the circle. It's right on the circle itself. All right? Comes to here, comes to here, creates this arc CD right there. What's the relationship between this angle and this arc? Right, the arc is double the angle, exactly. Or you could say the angle is what? Half of the arc. So what would arc CD be equal to? Be 40 degrees. So that would be 40 degrees, this would be 75 degrees, and so on. Everybody good with that? All right. Um, was, that all, was that all we did so far as far as the arcs and the angles? I think so. Yeah, for the most part, I think that's pretty much it. So what we're going to do today, we're going to do, I think there's four, one, two, three, four, well, there's five theorems that we're going to learn. And they have a little bit to do with what we just talked about, but they're a little bit more involved. I'm not going to go through the proofs, just basically due to time, uh, but I'm not going to go through the proofs, but we are going to talk through the theorem and I am going to draw a picture. I'm not going to write the theorem down. I will read it, and it is in the book, so it's on section 8.5 if you want to look at the theorem itself written down. It's just, um, just again, not enough time to do that. It's, I don't know. Just look at 8.5. At the bottom or the top, it says what section it is, so just flip till you see it's 8.5. Because I don't have my book open. I just have my notes. All right. Uh, let's draw this thing first, and then we'll read it. Now, we have talked about what kind of line that is. Now, that line right there, it just touches that circle at one point. Do you remember what that name is? We haven't talked about this in a while. It's a tangent. That's right. It's tangent to the circle. So it hits the circle at exactly one point. Everybody got that? All right. So let's draw another line that looks like this. Now, technically, 
I don't think I'm going to put these arrows every single time just because it's just takes too long. All right? If I had something like this, technically this could keep going through. All right? But we're going to stop it right there. So what would I call this? If, if this is a line, right? If that kept on going through right there, what's a line that goes through a circle and hits a circle at two points? It's not a chord. A chord actually starts and stops. But if this is a line, it goes through the circle. It's not considered a chord. So it's a word we haven't really used that much, but when we taught it, we obviously talked about it. It's not a tangent. It's a it starts with an S. Anybody remember? No, that's okay. It's called a secant. All right, it's called a secant. Anybody? Does that ring a bell? Nope. No. All right. Look back on the lesson. You'll see it. So this is a secant. S E C A N T. Right? And what does it do? It crosses the circle at two points. It's a line. So technically, everybody's listening, right? So it's technically a line. So this could extend and keep on going with the arrow on the other end of it. Right? So a secant is a line that basically hits the circle in two points. We good? Yeah. I think it was Jack mentioned a chord. What's the difference between a chord and a secant? This right here would be a chord. It stops. That's right. It starts at the. It starts on the circle and it ends where? On the circle. Everybody got it. So it would be a line segment, wouldn't it? So a chord is a line segment. A secant is a what? A line. All right. A tangent is also a line. All right. Keeps on going. So what we're going to do is we are going to look at the angle. This is the theorem. Now they number these theorems, but. By no means do I expect you to remember the numbers of the theorems. I don't even write them down, okay? Because each book is different, right? This this circle chapter might be chapter 7 in another book, or it might be chapter 9 in another book. And they would name it, like, they would name it, if this was like 8.5, I think they would call it like 8.5.1, because it's the first theorem. Is that what they call it? You got your book open? Yeah. So that's why they call it that, just because it's chapter 8, it's section 5, and it's the first theorem, Okay. I've, I've heard, I've never had one, but I've heard that there are teachers that make you memorize like the theorem numbers and you have to write down what the theorems say. That's crazy. I think that's ridiculous. I just want you to know what the theorem does, all right? And so that's why I don't write them down. But let's read it, all right? Uh, if, you're, if you want to follow along in the book, you can. I'm just going to read off what the theorem says. It's kind of wordy, but this picture I think will make more sense than listening to all the words. It says, the measure of an angle... So which angle? Well, they tell you. Formed by a tangent and a secant. Well, I got a secant and I got a tangent, don't I? Let's write the word tangent. Ooh, handwriting, look like a little kid. All right, so there's an angle formed by a secant and a tangent. Everybody see that? So here's the angle that they're talking about right there. Now you could talk about this arc right there, but we're talking about this, or I'm sorry, angle. We're just talking about this angle right there, okay? So it says, the angle, the measure of the angle formed by that tangent, that secant, is one half the measure of the intercepted arc, all right? So it's pretty much like that one where we did the inscribed angle, isn't it? It's just half of the arc that it intersects, all right? So where does it intersect? There's A and there's B right there. If I just said arc AB, how do I know, how do I know I'm talking about this arc and not this arc going this way right here? How do I know that arc AB is the shorter one? It's a minor arc, that's right. Here's the center, it's less than half of it, right? So if I just said find arc AB, then you know you're going from the shortest distance from A to B. Got it? Okay. So if I asked you to find arc AB and I told you, actually, they do this. They actually give you the arc. So they say arc AB is 154 degrees. So let's put it right there, 154. And they want you to find, uh, let's put a letter there, find angle ABC, ABC, right? Now, would we just say, if you have a secant and a tangent, the angle that's formed between them is half of the arc that it cuts off. It's very similar to the inner, to the, um, oh, I just said it. What do you call it? The inscribed angle. 
very similar to the inscribed angle. What's going on today? Was there a traffic jam or something? Is that what's it was a happening? Car accident. Car accident? Okay. Car accident. All right. So if I wanted to find angle ABC, it's very, very close to the inscribed angle stuff. So what would I do? How would I find this angle right here? Come on, talk to me real quick. Divide by, divide by AB, by AB by yeah, this is exactly right. You just divide it by two. So the angle is half of the arc. Okay, very similar to the inscribed angle. Everybody got that? Okay, so that was pretty easy. So how do we find it? We go 154 divided by two. I think that's 77, isn't it? All right. Okay. So this arc, or this angle, I'm sorry, I keep saying arc. This angle right here at angle B is 77 degrees. That's pretty simple, isn't it? It's really not any different than what we did before. But now we're going to get a little different, okay? So hang on. So here's a circle. Uh, they give you an example in the book, but we pretty much did an example. So I'm not even going to worry about that. Let's go to the next theorem. So this is our second theorem. Uh, let's try to draw it like this. So what did I just draw right there? What is that line right there? Say it, Jack. It's a secant. Thank you. All right, so it's a secant. I got two secants this time. I don't have a tangent and a secant. I just have two secants. All right, and you form some angles. Now, where do those secants form the angle? I don't know if that's the greatest question or not. They form it inside of the circle. Everybody see that? Okay, it's not inscribed. It's not inscribed. Listen, listen to me very carefully. It's not a central angle because it's, it doesn't start at the center. It's not an inscribed angle, because what does an inscribed angle do? The vertex is right on the circle. So where's the vertex to these angles that are formed by those two secants? They're just inside the circle. That's important, that's an important distinction, because guess what we're gonna do in a little bit? We're gonna have things that intersect outside the circle. Very good, okay, so they intersect inside the circle. This is the one that's different than the rest of them. Everybody hear me? This is the one that's different than the rest of the ones that we're going to do. So when they intersect inside of the uh, circle, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Let's do this in another color. This angle that's formed right in here. You could, you could look at this one and this one. I'm going to look at this little one right here and this little one right here. The angle that it's formed cuts off two arcs. You see it? This angle right here cuts off that arc. This angle right here cuts off what? That arc. that arc right there. Okay? Everybody with me? I'm not even going to put any letters and stuff in there. Let's just go right to the <coughs> example. Uh, well, now nah, let's do it. Let's put some letters in here. So, I mean, we're not even writing the theorem down, so we might as well do this a little bit formal. Uh, and this is C. And this is in the middle. That's the center is G. That's supposed to be a G. All right. And we're going to call this angle one right there. Everybody with me? So there's a relationship between these arcs and angle one. But look at the two arcs. Look at arc AB and look at arc DC. Do they necessarily look like the same measure? Do they look like the same? No. This one looks a little bit bigger than this one right here, doesn't it? Okay. So... Whatever this angle is doesn't mean that this arc is equal to this angle. Because, look at this angle right here. If this is angle 1, what's this angle right here? Two. No? One. It's also 1. Why is it also 1? Because they're what kind of angles to each other? This goes way back. Okay. What kind of angle are these? When you have two lines that intersect each other, the angles that are across from each other, what do we call them? V. Starts with a V. Vertex. Ventriloquist. Ventriloquist. How about vertical angles? You never, you don't remember that? The vertical angles are equal to each other. So if that's angle one, then that's angle one right there. Okay. So look, these angles are the same, but these arcs are not the same. So I can't just say, well, if angle one is 50 degrees, then this arc is 50 degrees. That only works when that vertex would be where? At the center, okay? Only if it's a central angle. Everybody got that? This is not at the center, okay? This is the center right here. They don't intersect at the center. 
but there is a relationship. Let's write it down. So angle one is equal to, and this is what the theorem says, it's half of the sum of the intercepted arcs. Okay? So it's half of the sum. What does it mean, sum? Add them up. Add them up. And the two arcs. What are my two arcs? A, B. I'm going to put a little arc symbol over it, and I'm going to add it to what? DC. To DC. Put an arc over that. Okay? That right there is your theorem. That's basically what your theorem says. All right? Instead of writing it out with all the words, that's really what it says. So, like, if AB is 10, DC is 10. Okay, let's do some. So, one would be 10. I tell you what, let's do, do we have time? Yeah, I think we have time. Let's do an example. Do the example that's in the book. So we've got this and we've got this. Now technically these should have errors on the ends of them, but I'm not gonna put them on there. That's angle one right there. This little angle right there is 45 degrees. This angle right here is 85 degrees. And this angle is 120 degrees. Okay. So I'm going to mark the, uh, the arcs that they intercept. See this angle one right here? What arc does it cut off? Uh, the, 85. the 85, right. So let's just draw it. Is that all right? Yeah. That's cool. All right, what is the other angle? What is the other angle one, the, the vertical angle to it? It cuts off what? It cuts off this. But do I know that one? No. Okay, I don't know that one. So guess what I'm going to have to do? I'm going to have to find it. That's right. All right, so it shouldn't be that hard. How do I find this blue one on the right right here? So basically you want to add up the other three arcs and then subtract them. You got it, okay? Because look, I got all the other arcs except for this one, don't I? Are we paying attention? I've got all the other arcs except for this one right here, and that's what I'm trying to find, right? They all add up to a whole circle, which is what? 360, so you could go 360. You could add them up and then subtract them from 360, or you could just subtract them. It doesn't matter how you do it. So minus 120, what? Minus 85, what? Minus 45. Okay. Once you do all that math, I think you get 110. I didn't do that in my head. I got it in my notes. Okay. But you put in a calculator if you want, you get 110. So what's this blue one right here? It's 110. Now, can you solve for angle one? This is what we're trying to solve for. Remember, they intersect. I know this is exciting, but listen to me. They intersect inside the circle. So what does our theorem say? You add, up arcs, you add up the two arcs and divide it by two. So angle one is equal to half of those two arcs added up. So it's 110 plus 85. All right? And you do the math, you get 97 and a half. Okay? And that's what that angle right there is, 97 and a half. Everybody good? Now again, what did I say at the beginning of this? This is the only one. We're going to do three more, I think. Three more uh, theorems. This is the only one where you add the two together. All right. So everything that we do, we're going to take half of it, but we're going to take half. Instead of adding them, what do you think we're going to do next? Subtract. We're going to subtract. Okay, and I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Ben, question? Like this angle right here? Yeah. Well, you find angle one, which is 97 and a half. So how would you find this one right there? You could you could do this. You could do it one or two ways. One way is the easiest way. It's that way. Okay? Since you know angle 1, you can just take it away from 180 to get that. Or you could add 120 and 45 and then take half of it and it should be the same exact number. Okay? Yeah. Hey, don't ever say that. You have any the rest of the lesson. Okay? I mean the concept's easy though, isn't it? Would you all agree with that? Yeah, the concept's pretty easy. That to find the angle that's formed by those two secants right there, just take the arcs that they cut off, add them up, that's the sum, and then take half of it, and then you've got that angle right there. Yep, pretty easy. All right, let's do another one. Uh, let's see. Now this time, <clears throat> what did we say we had before? We had two secants and the intersect where? 
Outside. Inside. That was the first one we did. Guess what we're going to do now? Outside. That's right. We're going to have two secants that intersect outside the circle. Everybody see that? You see the difference between the two? <clears throat> They're both secants, but this one intersects outside the circle. The other one we just finished doing intersects where? Inside the circle. Okay. So let's put some uh, stuff in here. I didn't even do an example for this, but that's okay. <clears throat> I think I have a big example at the very end. So we don't have an example specifically for this one. So that's a, we're going to write down, we'll kind of write it semi-formally. That's E and that's C. All right. So what we're going to do, we're going to find what angle one's equal to. So let's do this again with the, uh, with the arcs. So what arcs do they, what arcs are cut off by this angle one right here? Yeah, B, D, and C, D. Very good. All right, so I'm going to mark it just so you can see it a little easier. So there's C, E, and there's B, D. Everybody good? All right, so what is the relationship between them? We said it already. The other one, you added them up and you took and you divided by two. This time, you're going to do what to them? You're going to subtract. Okay. Now, does it matter which order you subtract them in? No. Yeah. It does. Okay. Which one? Which one's going to go first? So, what are we going to do? We're going to take the bigger one, right? You take the bigger one or the one that's furthest away from the, this angle, because the further oh, the further away from this angle, the bigger your arc is going to get. Would you agree? Starts off pretty close, right? But it keeps on going in that direction and it gets bigger and bigger until it gets to right here. So you take the bigger one, the one that's further away, and then you subtract the smaller one or the one that's closest to that angle. All right. So we go CE minus BD. Now remember, this one is minus. It's the difference. That's the word they use in the theorem. Okay. It's the difference of the intercepted arcs. All right. Now, again, I don't have an example for this one in particular because they wait till the end and they give you one big, huge example, and I want to make sure we get to that. Does that make sense? These are two secants, all right? You had two situations when you had two secants. You had two secants that intersect inside the circle, and then what'd you do? To find the angle, you add them up and you divide by two. When the, inter when the secants intersect outside the circle right there, then you, add, then you don't add them up. What do you do? You subtract them and then take half of it. Make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. Let's keep going. Here's a circle, I think. Here's a circle. Watch what we have now. Do you remember the first one we did today? Guys, I'm not finished. Do you remember the first one we did today? We had a what and a what? What were our two lines? Uh, and a tangent, okay? So this time I'm going to have a secant and a tangent again, but let's go back and look at that first one. That secant and the tangent. Where did they intersect each other? At the, let's, let's uh, use some fancy geometry words. They intersect where? Where that tangent hits the circle, what do we call that thing? The point of tangency. Okay, they intersect at the point of tangency. But this time, this is not the comedy hour here. If it was, I'd be laughing, but I'm not laughing. This time, they intersect not at the point of tangency. Where do you think they intersect? There's no word for it. There's no fancy word for it. They just intersect where? Say it. Outside the circle, right. Okay, we just did one. They intersect outside the circle. I said there's no fancy word for it. All right, so here we go. It's basically the same idea as what we just did. So let's call this angle one right there. And again, I'm going to draw it. Let's use green this time. I'll, I'll make them kind of fat. But look, this is a little different. 
So where, what arcs does this angle one cut off? I didn't put any letters in here, but I'll just draw it. From here to where? I am recording right there. And I'll tell you what, let's do this in a different color just so we don't get them mixed up. And then from there to there, okay? Everybody with me? So let's put some letters in here to be proper. So that's B. This point right here is G. This one here is A. Everybody's watching, right? Got a lot of talking. Just because I'm writing these down, you should be writing them down and not talking. All right, so there we go. So let's write it kind of formally now. So if I want to find what angle A is or angle one is equal to, then what is it? Which one minus which one? Well, it's first of all, it's half, right? It's half of the green one minus the what's that look like? Red or okay? Yeah, the one that's further away. The one that's further away is going to be bigger, right? So B A, right? So it's arc B A minus what? Arc E A or A E doesn't make any difference. However you want to say it. All right, there you go. So there's your little formula. It's pretty much the same as the other one, isn't it? A little different because they actually come to a point right here. Those two arcs actually come to a point. But those are the arcs that are cut off. It's outside the circle. So it's not that hard to remember. It's really not that different than the last one we just did. It's just a little bit different. Okay, so we've had two secants a couple times, right? Intersecting inside the circle, intersecting outside the circle. We've had a tangent and a secant intersecting at the point of tangency. Right here, we had a secant and a tangent intersecting what? Outside the circle. Would you be able to have a tangent and a secant intersecting inside the circle? No. No, there's no way because the tangent doesn't do what? It doesn't go inside the circle at all, all right? So uh, you can't have that, but you can have to, what are we missing now? To what? Tangent. Two tangents, oh. that's right. Now again, can the tangents intersect inside the circle? No. All right, so let's try to, let's not draw that. I want to draw it like this. All right, so there's a tangent right there. And then let's start right here. Well, let's start right here. And then go until it just touches right there. All right. So now do we, what do we have? We got two tangents that intersect outside the circle. Outside the circle. And that's the only way the two tangents can intersect anyway is if they're outside the circle. Okay. So um, it's basically the same rule as before. Let's put some letters in here. Uh, let's call this C. Let's stick a point right here and call that B. This is A. This is F right there. All right, here we go. So angle one. Now let's take a look. Let's do that. Um, let's put those arcs in here again. Now this is, again, kind of the same, but kind of different. So what are the arcs that are uh, intercepted? Guys, let's pay attention. Look up here. Get in. Up here. So CBA and CA. So I could just write it down, but since I've been doing this the whole time, I don't know how steady my hand is. There we go. That's not too bad. All right. And I don't know, let's go to this color right here. And then you've got this arc right here. Boom. A little wiggly at the end, but that's okay. All right. So those are the two arcs that are intercepted by those two uh, tangents. So what is it again? It's one half. Don't forget the one half. And then it's CBA. Now, why did I have to put three letters? I've only been putting because two letters. That's right, because it's a major arc. It's more than 180 degrees, right? Because from here to here would be, from here to here would be a semicircle, right? Semicircle. And then it's a little bit more. So that would go first minus what? CA or AC. It doesn't really matter which way you say it. And there it is. That is that. Pretty easy, huh? And again, it's minus. Remember, what was the only one that we actually added the two arcs together? Yeah. When you had two what? When you had two secants and they 
intersected inside the circle. It's the only one where you add them up. Inside the circle. Right. Inside the circle, you add them up. Inside the circle, you add them up. Outside the circle, you subtract them. But you always take half of it. Everybody got it? Okay, let's do an example. We got 10 minutes. See if I can get this done in 10 minutes. All right, here we go. Let's try to draw this as I'm drawing it. So don't just sit there and just talk while I'm doing this. This is we've talked about this all year. Talk about this all year. Just because I'm drawing something doesn't give you free reign to do whatever you want to do. Now look at this. We got three lines going through here. But well, we got what? I got a secant. I'm sorry. I got a tangent right up here. I got a tangent here. What's this one in the middle? That's a secant. So let's mark the stuff. There's X. That's W. Um, look, they put that arc is A. That's a little bit weird, okay? So, and this point right there. You understand when I put a W right there, a letter, it means that point of tangency. It's where it hits. And this is that intersection right there. They don't put the dots there. They just put the letters there. It's up to you to understand. It's up to you to understand that that's what it means. Okay, this is 145 degrees. This arc from here to here. This is Z. This is 88 degrees. This is V. And this whole thing, that big angle right there, do you see that? The whole entire angle is 40 degrees. Does it mean it splits that 40 in half? Not necessarily. No. You don't know that, okay? So you can't say that. All right, so here's what we're finding. We're finding um, angle uh, YXZ. YXZ. We're finding arc WY. And we're also finding arc W, V. Okay? So those are the three things that we're finding here. All right, where in the world do we start? Now, do you understand, right? If I just take that 145, this is not just floating in midair. What is 145? From where to where? From Y, y to, to Z. Z. And this 88 is from V to Z, right? And then this is... Listen, shh, shh, shh. I'm going to put a little degree symbol there because it's talking about the arc, okay? So it's not talking about the length of the arc, just the degree measure of the arc. So that would be from W to Y. Everybody see that? Yeah. Okay. All right, and then again, the 40 degrees is that whole thing right there. Where do we start? Well, let's start with um, the angle. So what is the angle again? Y, X, Z. Angle Y, X, Z. Well, let's find it. Where is it? Where's Y? Y is there, X is there, and Z is there. So we're trying to find this angle right here. Let's just call it angle one. Is that all right? Just to make it easy instead of using Y, X, Z. So, yeah, I can do this. Zach, or, um, Jack, tell me. You got it. Okay, everybody see that? See this angle one right here? It, there's a secant. There's a tangent. It cuts off this arc. It cuts off this arc. They intersect outside the circle. So what are you going to do? So angle one, we'll just call it angle one, is equal to one half, 145 minus 88. And that comes out to 28.5. I just did that in my head. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> I got it on my notes, all right? So 20, use calculator, 28.5 degrees. So that... Let's just get rid of that one right now. So this angle right there is 28.5. Now, maybe we need it, maybe we don't, I don't know. But what can we find right away after I know that this is 28.5? Yeah, this one right here, W, X, Y, very good. So that angle right there, okay, we can find it. How do we find it very easily? 40 minus 28.5. And that comes out to 11.5. Everybody with me? 
Right. Now, this is one of the questions that they ask you to find, okay? They don't ask you to find this one, but it might be helpful to us. Would you agree? Yeah. So, yeah, might as well just put it in there. Maybe we use it, maybe we don't, all right? Um, now, the next part... Let's take a look at this. Let's use that 11.5. Now, let's think. Come on, don't joke around. Let's think. Don't just let me do this. I want you to think ahead. That's what you should be doing every single time. Let's use that 11.5. Where does it go? It goes to W, and it goes all the way out here to Y, doesn't it? So what arcs does it does it form? Well, this one, which is A, and I don't know what that is, right? But it also forms this one right here. Could I find one or the other? Well, I know this is 145. I know that's 88. I know the whole thing is what? 360. Okay. So I can't find it directly, but I could do this. So it would be what? It would be 360 minus what? 145 minus 88. And this arc right here is what I'm looking for. Minus what? A. That's right. Okay. So this arc is equal to this. All right, and that would be 127 minus A. So 127 minus A. So this arc right here is 127 minus A. But kind of. You got the right idea, but in the wrong order. Okay. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna I'm gonna erase this just to give myself some room. So let's take a look. Remember, we knew that was 11.5, right? Yeah. Okay, so that angle, that 11.5, that angle equals half of... Now, what goes first, though? The A goes first because it's the one that's further away. That's the bigger one, right? So this is subtraction. So it absolutely matters what order you subtract in. So I'm going to go A minus... Now, you got to be careful. Now, watch this. This is algebra right here. This is very, you can't just put 127 minus A right there because you're subtracting 127 minus A. You see that? So you're not just subtracting 127, you're also subtracting a minus A. You see that? That might be where you get tricked up right there. All right, so let's, um, let's do this. Let's get rid of the one half. How do we get rid of the one half? Multiply by 2. So what's this times 2? What? What's 11.5 times 2? 23. Right. Everybody see what I just did right there? I multiplied this by 2, and I came over here and I multiplied that by 2. So that canceled. That's 23. Let's do this. Look, this is very important. This is what kids miss all the time. Students, people, teachers, myself included. So look you got to distribute that negative through this. So what do we have? It's A, what? Minus 127 minus a negative A, which is a plus A. That's super important. If you didn't realize that, then you would have done this wrong. You would have got rid of the A's. If this would have been a minus A, A minus A is zero. You wouldn't even have a variable left, would you? All right, so that should give you a trigger warning, right, to, um, to figure out this. So what... What do we have? We got 23 equals, what's the A plus A, which is 2A minus 127. Let's do the math. Add a 127 and blah, blah, blah. So A is 75. Now, once you get A, you should be able to find the other stuff pretty easy. Okay? So, so A is 75 degrees. You should be able to get this, 127 minus 75, and you got that angle. And I think that's everything you needed to solve for, okay? Did you record this? I did record it. Yay! Um, here's your homework. Look, this is your only chance to do this homework because this stuff's going to be on the test. So make sure you do this. It's pages uh, 379, 380. It's on your lesson plan thing I gave you yesterday, but I'm writing it down anyway. So it's 16 to 30. Make sure that's due to, make sure you get that done for tomorrow, okay? We're going to go over this. We're going to review for the test. We're going to take the test on Thursday.